Hey, what's up? We are DuckDuckGo. All right. Woo! Yeah, that's a good start. And he goes. <laughs> I'm going to go, go. <laughs> All right. Got my uh, pair. That works. Little notepad here. Good job, pair guys. Good quality stuff. So, yeah. My friend Getty here, he's, he's more or less running the show. I'm just uh, trying to water down the hardcore German a little bit and <laughs> sort of just give a general introduction of, of DuckDuckGo. Uh, and if I drop any F-bombs or if I've got like a German accent or whatever, it's, it's all Getty's fault. Uh, <laughs> living with a German guy kind of rubs off on you a little bit after a week or whatever. So. Fucker. But yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Anyway, so DuckDuckGo is a search engine. Yes, yes. So yes, we're a search engine, and you'll notice here our results are, are very clean. And uh, Getty, if you want to scroll down, maybe we can show how all the results are on one page. Yes, very nice. So, and our, uh, our search results are improving all the time. So, uh, but yeah, I guess most important to know about this particular search that we just did. Uh, we did not log your IP. We did not plant a cookie in your browser. W there's no uniquely identifiable information about, about, uh, you know, about your computer or anything. So we don't track you at all. Uh, and I guess the second part of that is like, not only do we not track you, but we're not customizing your search results based on who we think you are. You know, we're not, we're not building this network uh, upon networks of profiles about you and based on, you know, you know, we're not linking it to your email accounts or your maps or whatever kind of search habits you might have like some of our other conglomerate competitors do. We're not, we're not messing with your search results. So, uh, so that's important. And, you know, like, that's just getting annoying. Like, why are they doing Why are they customizing search results for different people? And it's just, that's just lame. We don't do that. So, and we couldn't do that anyway if we wanted to. Because, hey, well, it would be possible because we don't, we don't track you guys. It'd be, it, it would just go against our, our principles. So, so we're pretty awesome like that. Privacy rocks. Woo! <laughs> yes. <laughs> for privacy, yes. All right. So, well, you're quick. You are slow. He's ahead of my notes here. <laughs> All right. So I've got a big note here. It says girls. What was the girls? Oh, yes. Getty and I were, uh, we're on Madison State Street. You are not girls. No, we're not girls. But in Madison State Street, there are plenty of girls. So after the job fair yesterday, I'm just going to huck this out there to you. Heads up. Woo! <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's like, uh, we, after the job fair, we have tons of flyers left over from, from DuckDuckGo after the job job fair. So we had to hike back all the way to our hotel, which is up uh, up near the Capitol building. And uh, yeah, so we, we were hiking these boxes all the way up. And uh, we were like, hey, let's, let's pass them out. Let's spread the word here in Madison. So we're giving these flyers to the great folks of Madison, and, and particularly the, the nice girls here. There's, let's, let's be honest, there's a good supply of them here in Madison. This, this town rocks. So uh, we took the opportunity to pass out a few flyers. And when we're passing them out, we're like saying, you know, oh, hey, like, try out DuckDuckGo. We're, we're a search engine. And it's often convenient to say, like, you know, we're uh, just to make it really quick for people. Like, we're a Google alternative, you know. Don't Google. We'll just duck it. So, so anyways, uh, but we're not, I, I hate to say we're an alternative to Google because we're actually, the way I see it, we're more of like a superior alternative to Google. Yes, and I'm about to show you why, okay? We've got these features we call banks, and it's, they're actually really cool. Basically, it's just a, <clears throat> a bunch of keywords uh, uh, precluded by an exclamation mark. So, okay, if you want to search State Street again, mm -hmm. yeah, let's try, and let's try using uh, exclamation mark G. Bang! Yeah! You're instantly on Google. <laughs> All right. So, so that's pretty cool. I mean, you can search Google with DuckDuckGo. And what I tell people is, like, if you don't have your search engine defaulted to DuckDuckGo, like, you're crazy because if you really want to search Google from time to time, which we'll admit they've got some better queries that, that they have better results for, 
you can just search Google from DuckDuckGo. So really, like, what are you waiting for? Like, just set your default to DuckDuckGo, okay? Uh, but then we've also got other ones. Yeah, so let's, I saw Prometheus the other day. Great movie. Uh, so we're gonna type that, bang! All right! <laughs> we're on, <laughs> we're on IMDB now, and there's like hundreds of other sites that you can do that kind of thing with, so. Really, if you're smart and you just know what kind of site you want to you want to search, like just remember the bangs. And Getty wants to pull up the, the entire list of bangs, so you can just search bangs. Ah, yes. Yeah, you're, you're jumping ahead, buddy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. No, no, no. Just search bangs. I think yeah. you can just search bangs, and it'll just show you all of them. Really? What? But I can go there. Here. Okay. Well, as you can see, we've got a lot of sites that you can search. And every site has generally like a shortcut. For example, you could type stack, like exclamation mark stack exchange, and then search something. Or you could just, you could just uh, type SX for the shortcut. So our Twitter is TW, uh, Google Maps is uh, GM. So that kind of thing. So you get really quick with it after you start to, to learn these uh, shortcuts. So bangs are pretty much awesome. <laughs> what? What's up? Yes, yes. You we, have, we, have a, we have feedback. We have a feedback from newbang.html that you can uh, give us new banks and we add them very fast. Yeah, yeah. We're improving that process too. I'm making it really easy for people to just submit their site so they can get shortcuts uh, for their own project. And we're pretty cool like that. So this is obviously Pearl Conference. Let's, let's do something relevant. Let's search for Moose, okay? Here we've got, this is our like um, instant answers box. It's, uh, we call it zero click info. So if you notice, um, Google kind of decided to copy us, and now they've got something like this now. But really, we started this stuff, so like, we're we're one step ahead of them. Anyway, like uh, we've got moose, big Canadian deer. We've got Manitoba moose hockey team. Another, we've got Mark Messier, Canadian hockey player. Like Canadians are cool. Like Canadians are really cool, but these are not the search results we're looking for. So let's go to the source. Let's go exclamation mark CPAN. Bang! Yeah! We pulled up CPAN here, and we're searching CPAN direct now. So obviously we're, we're good. Bangs are awesome. Yes. It went right to the model. Oh, How do we do that? that that's uh, um, with, the, with the get lucky option of, of, of uh, CPAN. Oh, okay. I forgot the bang. We have a bang for this also. There's a bang for going to the first result from, from Meta CPAN. There's a different bang, yeah. Okay. It's what that's Meta CPAN's fault, but ours. Yeah, depending <laughs> on what you want to look for. Well, there's a whole bunch of different CPAN related banks. So, uh, and you notice he can add the, the bang to before or after, anywhere in the query. Even in the middle, it's found out recently. Just yeah, good matter. example, moves for middle. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so anyways, why don't you search Getty? Type public DNS. These are just some examples. Now, this is another zero-click info box, but you'll notice it's like the, the info there is dynamic. It's 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 pull it, one of our plugins is activated and now showing this this info. So we've got tons of different plugins like this. And uh, why don't you try XKCD? Again. Yeah, like. Uh, how about Hello World Pearl? Yeah. So our search engine just looks for these these like these hot keys, these keywords, and it will then run a plugin that we have on the DuckDuckGo server and then display that information there. Uh, search Master of Puppets lyrics. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Looking at you, Gaff. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so again, there are lots of uh, neat plugins there, and the whole plugin architecture is really cool. Obviously, it's all based in Perl, so what these are is just really simple Perl scripts. And uh, I wanted to, to point out that uh, that you know, like a lot of the Perl, like a lot of these plugins are all either DuckDuckGo staff made them, or open source contributors actually made them, and we've got a growing number of those guys now, and hopefully some of you guys will jump in the action here. Uh, because it's really easy, and I mean that, it's really easy. It's just a Perl script that you sort of have to add a few lines of boilerplate code to and then sort of uh, commit to our, our repo. And Getty's going to talk about that. But first, I'll show you my plugin. Uh, go anagram something. All right. 
It's just stupid, simple Perl scripts. All it does is, uh, all it, oh, what the hell? Okay. What? okay. I'm, just, I'm just saying it's random. Oh, okay, I read you. And anyways, it just shuffles the characters, whatever. And like, the reason I, I, I wanted to show this example is because I'm actually, I have a confession to make. I'm, I'm a Perl noob, and I, I actually have do UI design for DuckDuckGo, so I more or less have just been learning Perl, and this was like one of the scripts I was actually able to, to, to make on my own. And it even calls like a CPAN module to do the, like, the main shuffle uh, sub. So yeah, if I can code DuckDuckGo plugins, pretty much anybody can code DuckDuckGo plugins, and especially anybody here can code DuckDuckGo plugins. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass the baton here to the Getty, and uh, thank you very much. Woo! OK, um, so, um, so Derek already explained that you can extend DuckDuckGo. And you are might asking why. Um, the first advantage, of course, I mean, is you, you are using your search engine and you want features, and there is a missing feature you want to edit, which is actually impossible at Google and other computers. So we thought about that it's very important to the people that they can add their data, especially data which we actually don't care about, because there's data. I know everybody has its own life. Everybody has its own, uh, own needs. That's, that's why there are needs we don't know. Yeah? And so we need someone who actually gives us the data or gives us uh, the technology to achieve this. Uh, and another point is also that if you are, have a company with content, <coughs> you can actually also make a plugin for your company, which is delivering the data. And we are always referencing to the source of the data and everything where, where it comes from, so that uh, you as company can actually promote yourself with DuckDuckGo. If, if, you, if you have like something which we not already have in our data sets, then you can add it from your site, and your site is then the one that is always shown and is always a link to more at your site. So this is actually really a good, a good place to, to, if you have data to, to bring it on. For example, for the Game Crafter, we thought about now making that all the games of Game Crafter are actually really zero-click info. So when you search for a game that actually is a game on the Game Crafter, then you get the, 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 the information and the link directly to the shop from Game Crafter. <coughs> All this open source development is on GitHub and DuckPan. Um, right now we are just working with GitHub and pull requests to main repositories mainly, but uh, in uh, short term, long, middle term, uh, you will actually be able to upload it to DuckPan like anything else. I mean, you can do it already now, we'll come to this later, but it's not like the preferred way right now. <coughs> so, what we have uh, at DuckDuckGo, there are four kinds of plugins right now. Um, the fat hat, the goodies, the spice, and the long tail. Uh, <coughs> uh, all examples you saw uh, later are one of those. Uh, the fat hat, for example, is the meanings of moose. Yeah, the several meanings. Those, those, this stuff is thing. A goodie is like the anagram function. Yeah, the spice was the KX, K, uh, XKCD, and long tail was the, the, the lyrics. <coughs> so how they all work? The fat hat actually is a database at DuckDuckGo. We have one central database. We call it Wacky even though it's not a public name. <laughs> and in this database, we store all the meanings of specific words. So when you, when you search for, for moose, for example, this database will check for moose, uh, more or less. And then you get all those meanings out of it. So when you actually make a fat plug plugin, you can add to those so that we have more meanings for words or actually directly information if this one has directly information. Uh, so when you want to make a fat hat, you will actually it's, uh, it's uh, sadly not right now refactored, so it's very primitive. But the point is that fathead can be done in any language, and it's just text files, just two text files we need. We need one text file which describes what is the general thing about, about your fathead. In this case, Hello World. The Hello World uh, 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 plugin is uh, uh, so that, uh, um, that the name is shown that this is the Hello World uh, uh, fathead information. The domain is used for the small icon next to it. <coughs> the type is some variable that shows that, uh, us uh, where it comes from. And media wiki is a special parsing method, and keywords are helping us to organize the stuff. And <coughs> when you then have uh, defined what you, what you want to put out, you need to generate an output txt. So <coughs> we have like several variables. The page, so the search term, which is actually hitting the spot. Namespace is uh, not relevant for stuff which is not actually using uh, JavaScript in the fathead area. The all, which links to where the source is from this. 
the description which actually shows the uh, a text information about this. Synopsis will actually show codes, so you can use description or synopsis or both, whatever. Uh, details is a, a smaller sub down under description. And type and lang are uh, variables we not yet used so good, but um, the details on this just ask, so it's not a problem, because when you generally have your data ready, those details are cleaned up with us and we, we help you there. So when we have this Hello World example we just saw, <coughs> we have like the page is Hello World Perl, the namespace is empty, the URL is the link to GitHub, description is Hello World in Perl, and synopsis is this thing where we actually escape the returns to slash n. So when this all is then joined with tap, tap delimiters, you get actually this out, what you saw there. Yeah, you see the variables, everything there. It's, it's totally easy. I mean, really, a caveman can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> so yeah, I said, you can do it in all languages, Perl, Python, Ruby, Java. God damn it, you can make a fucking shell script if you want to do it that way. We will, we will actually do it. But no, fuck, no PHP, please. No, <laughs> no. No. Seriously, seriously, security. Yeah, I, I don't want to run PHP script on our servers. So, what uh, alternative stuff is also, if you are a company who actually want to generate the fat head stuff on their own site, yeah, you can generate those files and you just fetch it from your, from your resources. So you make like, I don't know, DuckDuckGo meta text, DuckDuckGo output text, talk with us and we integrate those. So that we fetch them regularly and your data of your company is always in our fat head database. <coughs> so, let's take a look at the concrete plugin of the goodie of Anagram, the one Derek's make. Yeah. <coughs> so, as you see, it's actually so simple that I don't know what I should exactly explain here. So, we use DuckDuckGo goodie, which is actually injecting lots of special functions and keywords so that we can use it. In his case, he wants also to use list utils shuffle to make the shuffling. The triggers start Anagram means that when the first word in the trigger is Anagram, then this plugin is triggered. Um, it's, it's, it's case insensitive and everything. It's, it's optimized so that when there's some char around, it's also covered and everything. <coughs> and then um, you have this handler, which is the function what is actually doing the stuff with the search query. In this case, we use handle remainder, which is giving you as the uh, uh, standard variable uh, back the, um, the rest of the query. So maybe we had anagram something, then in the variable there's the word something. Uh, in this case, he's splitting it up to the chars, it's garbling this stuff, it's joining again, and returning this stuff. Uh, and you see there, we have also attributes there. For example, is cached zero, so that it is always random. So that definitely the data is always shuffled new. <laughs> Another case is the public DNS, also a standard goodie, where we actually have a rec apps for accessing it, which is in this case, not the best solution, but it's a good example to, to show the, uh, uh, the, <coughs> the rec apps function. So we say here triggers query clean. So we want to run that uh, this plugin is triggered on uh, the clean query, cleaned up query, where we remove all stuff that is probably disturbing and clean up the spaces and everything so that you have always one space, not 20 spaces when the user does it and everything. And you can run <coughs> rec apps on it. And this, from us, we, we don't encourage people to use the rec app stuff because <laughs> We have to run every rec apps on this thing. If you make a word trigger, it's actually, the, the, the simple word triggers, it's actually uh, uh, 10,000 at once for the same price. <coughs> so this one is cached, and we have here defined an answer type, which is actually shown at the goodie information. In this case, we don't need any value from this stuff, because we just want to be triggered. And then we are getting out the text version for uh, the non-HTML thing. And then you can add additionally as farm parameter also the HTML, which slurp it just from a shared directory file. So this is a very, very simple thing. <laughs> okay. So if you want to do this and, and work with this, you actually need up Duckpan, which is our main Duckpan client. He's the, the, the Duckpan client for accessing and getting the Duckpan stuff. But it's also the simulator for DuckDuckGo. So when you, when you make your plugins, you get your own DuckDuckGo for testing your plugin so that you can see if it's coming out like you want it. <coughs> so you git clone our repository, you go into the directory, you use duckpan install depths to install the requirements. This is actually just doing installing the author depths and then the missing requirements. 
And then you can start DuckPunk query in the case of uh, goodies, where you have a text console, you give it in, and you get back uh, the result object with data printer so that you can see uh, uh, what is coming up. <coughs> As additional mod options, you can say DuckPun upgrade to upgrade to the latest versions of our open source stuff. And you can also use it, as I said, as the client for accessing our, reposit our uh, distributions we have on our DuckPun. So in this case, for example, with DuckPun, DDGC, local DuckDuckGo, DuckDuckGo, we are actually fetching the translations we have currently running on the community platform for DuckDuckGo. It's not, like, no, not yet active, but soon we have the option to switch the language on the DuckDuckGo interface. But <coughs> just to show that this is, it's a normal CPAN client also. So if you give in a module, it is downloading it. Um, if you want to have a shortcut and have no idea what you do and you are new to Perl, you can actually just get the install PL and use it, run it through Perl, which is actually installing local lib and everything ready for you. It's detecting if you have Perl brew, then it doesn't install anything and so on and so on. So this is like a, a shortcut to make it happen. <coughs> so when you do stack punk query, it actually looks like this. Yeah, so he's showing you all the plugins which are loaded and then it's asking you for a query so that you can test it. Um, just before someone asked, I thought about making it the parameters of the DuckPunk query function. So that if you give DuckPunk query blah, it's testing the query blah. But <laughs> argv is not really so like it is given. <laughs> so if you don't use uh, the signs, um, it's actually not uh, uh, bringing over the exact amount of spaces. So when you have like three, four spaces, you don't get this information in the Perl at the end. It's not accessible. That's why I said, okay, I just make it a command line tool which is doing its own prompt. So <coughs> the goodies are actually the goodies are actually just uh, uh, internal Perl scripts. The spice is actually calling external RPs. Even though don't track us policy, we are accessing those RPs through rewrites on our own server. So the IP doesn't go to the other side, even though your search query, of course, goes, because we need the data there. <coughs> but in the end, the, uh, your IP is still hidden. In this case, like, we have here the trigger start and uh, XKCD, like before on the other stuff. Start and means it can be in the beginning of the query or at the end of the query. <coughs> Spice 2 says where the remote RP is, the dollar $1 actually is the first parameter I give back on the handler. I'm coming to this now. And the spice wrap JSON P callback is a trick that when the RP is just giving back JSON, we wrap it with a, with a call to the JS function. Um, in the spice, you have uh, additionally to this simple Perl code, you have the spice JS, which is a function in JavaScript, which is fetching the stuff, which is coming back and putting it as a zero click info box in there. It's a bit complex, and if you start doing spice, you're sometimes getting crazy. But if you once get it, then it's very, very easy. Uh, <coughs> so, sorry, no jQuery. Uh, so, as I said, the spice gets triggered. Then, when the HTML is loaded up, we are calling the remote API via JS. The result is coming back, and this result goes to the spice.js function we just, we just said. Yeah. So, this is the other way of stuff. Um, <coughs> long tail. Long tail is sadly, I have no good example for this, sorry to say, but long tail is very new and, and it's not refactored in anything because um, it was the last one we did before we started the refactoring. And um, long tail is like, uh, uh, if nothing triggers, if nothing works, we check if there's something in the long tail database which actually is useful. For example, the, the lyrics. So if there's something other which can use the query better before, some spice, some goodies, some fathead, then this is proceeding. But the long tail is like the last one. For lyrics, it is a very good thing. Um, the difference from long tail to fathead mostly is that in long tail you have your own database. And in fathead, it's like that the database is a, a fixed structure. On long tail, you can decide how the database looks. And uh, the results are taken from those databases then. So they have your own table, your own structure for this. We are looking so. <laughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> what is coming up in the future is we are actually having a very, very nice concept to detect what the query is about. The problem is if you have like a query, for example, a restaurant in, in the near, near you, yeah, 
And we, we don't have a huge database. We don't have the database of all fucking places in the world. Yeah? So we thought, right, how, we can, how we can find out that this specific query is an existing restaurant, like Black Labs. Yeah, that's a Black Labs restaurant. And if you give hidden Black Labs, how can we know that this is actually a restaurant? We are, ge we are going clever here. We are going to check the search results we are getting back from, uh, from our, from our uh, from our search results and check what is in the first results in there. And Yelp, I don't know if some of you, you know Yelp, it's a database of, of all places in the world. So and if there is a hit for Yelp in the search results, then we know it's a place. So then we can actually start some spice, which is fetching the data from Yelp and showing it in our zero click info box. So this way we know all places without knowing them. So we call this deep spice, which will soon get also exposed to uh, the open source area. Before that, we also add all attributes that we have a huge database like Yelp is giving locations and blah, blah, blah. So this is like a good option to optimize the query without actually having a huge, huge database. <coughs> yeah, duck pun. <coughs> Many people ask me why I actually made the duck pun and didn't upload the stuff to <coughs> CPAN. Because the CPAN infrastructure actually would handle this stuff so that we can upload the plugins directly to CPAN and everything. But I, I'm too much per dude and I say, hey, why waste CPAN tester resources for our plugins, which are actually supposed to run on our hardware? So I thought I'd make an own duck pump so that I can make an own testing structure and everything. And why not make it exactly like CPAN? Because all tools are already there. So I say, hey, this is a really good way. <coughs> and it's right now working out good. Um, <coughs> for we have one example if you say like okay okay I don't like github and pull requests or like you have a company and say hey all stuff we do should be on our github and not on your github then you say okay then just release it like a CPAN module so in this case if, if you're familiar with this Scylla um, we are making an own package that, that go goody QR code which we made an own package because it has a special requirement which is actually hard for the people. So when we add it to the main repository, all people would struggle with this requirement, which is unnecessary, because it's only needed when you work on the QR code goodie. So, <coughs> so you actually can uh, uh, make this kind of stuff, and instead of upload to CPAN, you just add upload to DuckPAN as the Scylla plugin, and this will actually will uh, uh, upload the stuff to our uh, uh, DuckPAN uh, server. You just need an account on our community platform, which is then like pause, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you see it's, it's just a standard per distribution. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, in this uh, movement, we started to make a Decilla plugin auto module shares, shared years, which is actually generating uh, this uh, stuff for if you want a specific module have a specific shared year inside the distribution, you actually need uh, normally in Perl to define every one, yeah? So every single module you have, you need to f define where is the shared year of this. With auto-module shared years, it's actually scanning the namespaces, taking the module names, moving them to a lowercase path, and then actually making those available automatically, which is like really handy if you are working with module shared years. <coughs> So, um, now comes a very important point. Inbound hiring, inbound contracting. Um, at DuckDuckGo, we have uh, Gabriel Weinberg, who's the founder of DuckDuckGo, actually had many companies before, and he's entrepreneur, entrepreneur by heart. And he is very convinced to have only motivated people in the team. So, whoever is working for DuckDuckGo as contractor, as full-time employee, whatever, um, must actually be part of the community before. He must actually show before with your contributions, with your help, we are whatever way that he is really into the product. Because I always say the sentence, you can convert motivation into competences. Yeah? Everyone who is motivated will get the competences he needs. He will learn, he will learn, he will learn to get and achieve the target. But if you have someone which like 10,000 competences and he's not motivated working for you, then he's just producing crap. You, and you can't never fix this. The guy don't get motivation, just he is competent. But if you are motivated, you get competence. 
So <coughs> this is actually a very good way because all people in the team are not avoiding work. If we see something, we solve it, and we think about what is the best solution for the user. And we're not like, oh, now we do it this way, and it's so much work, and stuff. Like no, we want to do it. We want to do it. We're actually also not counting every, every, the contractors we have. We're actually not counting every minute they do for DuckDuckGo. It's like they're also motivated to help DuckDuckGo, which is really, really awesome. And I can't, can only suggest every company to do it this way as much as possible. I know that some companies are not able to do a so, so slow hiring, but uh, it's actually really, really, really working out very, very, very good. <coughs> so, but besides development, you have, of course, other ways to get into the stuff. You can say, hey, uh, uh, I want to do design and layout, and you say, like, hey, here, I, if I fix your HTML, I found a bug there, and then you tell us what to fix, and we do this, and we do this. So there's actually the good uh, uh, option to go in, HTML, CSS. You can do support for our users. You can go uh, uh, with the community management. You can install extra services. For example, this was the way I started at DuckDuckGo. I said, hey, Gabriel, you need a central user database. You need something that the fans can say, okay, I want an account at DuckDuckGo. I want to be part of the DuckDuckGo community with a name. So I said, okay, let's set up an XMPP Java server and give them the chance to register there. And it was a really good success. We are actually right now the biggest Prosody uh, XMPP server, uh, public one. <laughs> you can register there and everything. And then in the next step, we made the community platform based on this. So our community platform is based on the XMPP user database, which is actually very handy because when you have some central database, it's really working out better. <laughs> um, we also have lots of people who make browser plugins to, to integrate DuckDuckGo somehow in their browsers. We have one guy who's actually working nearly full-time just on, on specific browser plugins. Um, but we also have business development. We need also people who make contracts, who, who go to the companies and say hello and everything like that. And also, of course, marketing. Yeah? <coughs> and probably someone will one day think about making our own index, our own huge database. I probably need to explain this. Um, if you not noticed or if you, no one told you before, DuckDuckGo has not his own index. We don't have the index of all search pages in the world. If we would have this, we wouldn't need a bit more money than, than we have right now. So I don't know if someone of you uh, heard of Coiler, who actually burned 10 million in generating an owned index and then closed unfinished. <laughs> so um, it's actually a hard topic, but we want to do it, but we want to do it open source. We want that if we do this index stuff, then it goes in the open source direction so that everybody can help making it a better index for all. But as said, it's, it's not like um, having an own index is, is solving all of our problems. So we are concentrating on everything that has more effect than generating an own index. Because this is very expensive. And the zero click info stuff, making those happen is more easily and more easy, and the people uh, uh, actually get directly effects. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are happy with, uh, with the results from a zero-click info, then like, and we have 1% a bit better search results. <coughs> um, besides the fact that uh, uh, we are uh, uh, having our own stuff, we also try to generate as much uh, per modules as possible. So when everywhere there's a chance that we can abstract something for the community to make it available public on CPAN, we, we make it. Uh, those is a list of modules which were actually directly uh, coming out the requirements of DuckDuckGo. MST made us import into because we had problems with injecting use strict into, into the classes. Importing pragmas is really a problem in Perl, so that's why he made import into. <coughs> this, what I said before, auto module shared here. We have CPAN repository which is generating the DuckPan uh, repository structure from the files for CPAN. CPAN is only running on files, so if you give to the CPAN repository a distribution, it's sorting it indirectly to the right place and everything, so it's a really handy module. We made this data, which is a combination of several, dist, uh, several uh, uh, CPAN meta modules, which are analyzing the, the distribution and give you information for this so that we can better sort it in. Uh, a local simple is our translation infrastructure, which is actually JS and Perl with the exactly same API. So if you, have, if you use local simple, you have a get text wrapper, which is actually giving you the exactly same API in Perl as in uh, JavaScript, which can be handy, uh, even though I must say get text is not the best solution for translations, but we must make a cut because the, the bigger solutions are making bigger problems on the JavaScript because we also need translations 
in the same way on JavaScript. <coughs> Another one is file share your project this year, which is like which is like a better version of the shared year of, the, of a shared year implementation because it actually also covers the development case. Normally you have the problem on shared year that it's just working in, 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 install, in this installed version, but if you are in your repository, it's actually not giving you something back. So we made this module, or we had someone who made this module, which is actually then generating this, <coughs> fetching this from the, from the development directory. Module data is uh, something where you can get information about the version of a module, also about the version of a module which is not loaded, which is very, very handy. Path scan in, ink is um, fetching modules from, from paths. You can say, hey, this path, tell me what modules are in there without loading them. <coughs> and I made the MUX, uh, MUCross extension and more of those. Uh, which are actually all used in the DuckPunk client. <coughs> so, um, the most best thing to get help is on our, our IRC Freenode channel, DuckDuckGo. You can, if you don't use IRC, you can use the web chat, which you can reach under this whole EAC chat. If you are more familiar with email, you can also write us an email at open at DuckDuckGo.com. And if you need IDs for new plugins and what you want to do, you go to ids.duckduckhack.com where you can find many people who said, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this, who are not developers, who have no idea what they do, and so they need others to do it. But we also add our own ideas there. Sometimes we have an idea, but we say, ah, oh, we don't want to do this now, we have other things to do. So we add it there so that people can catch up if they think it's really use useful. <coughs> and we make a hackathon. Um, and for the hackathon, I must say, it's not a DuckDuckGo hackathon. So if you come there and visit us, you don't need to work for DuckDuckGo all the time. Yeah? We mainly try to achieve that. That's why we call it Quack and Hack. We make one day of talks, mainly of talks, where the people can actually uh, uh, learn Perl. We probably have some guests there who will introduce you with good, good uh, uh, Perl <coughs> information and make you a good beginner course so that you can jump into the topic of Perl. And so can make Dr. Go plugins, but also can make other CFUN modules. It's end of June to 1st July uh, at the Paoli uh, Dr. Go headquarter. On quackenhack.com, you will get a standard uh, act. So or everybody who registered also at other Perl's event, except like CNA, <laughs> uh, will actually uh, have already an account there. And please, um, everybody who wants to come, Definitely register today, please, and definitely come to me and talk with me. If you need anything for, uh, 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 if you have any problems, if you say, ah, I definitely want to come, so but I have this problem or this problem, then we probably clean, clean it up. Um, we also have free drink, free food and everything, so it will be definitely a lot of fun. And at the second day, then we will really hack together, sit together and do good things and help that the poor world is getting better. <coughs> so. Oh, sorry. I know 18 o'clock is not American style, <laughs> but I think you know what I mean. Um, I thought, hey, we have one T-shirt from Dr. Go, which is signed by Gabriel Weinberg. And we want to give it out for the one who is, till 1800, going to show a good plugin. Derek and I will decide which one. And uh, um, so if you make a plugin today and show it to us, it's not really need to be working, yeah, but just like just if you see script. just the script, the direction, the, the idea and everything, then we will give you this T-shirt if you are the winner. So <coughs> I hope some people are trying something so that we can get uh, uh, anything good out of this. Can they just email it to you, maybe? Yeah, of course. You can email it to me. At, you can also email it to openmetduck.com, whatever, or you can just make directly a pull request to our public repository. So there you have all the options uh, uh, to give it to us. And we are running around here, so there will be no problem. It's also enough if you show the laptop and say, yeah, this. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Are there any questions? I think Randall had a question earlier. He also have a question? OK. Then.
come together. How are you managing who owns what club in the keyboard? Um, I must say you can't say we have a general concept there. We have um, we have made a concept called Dr. Go Blocks. It's also part of the open source repository, so you can check into this and see it. We have Words Blocks and Rec Apps Blocks, which are, bun which are a combination of several plugins. And then we have internally, which is not open source, our business logic, how we combine those blocks. You can see it like, if this block with those plugins is having the hit, then do this. <coughs> If it's not hitting, then check this block, and then check this block. Or if this block hitting, go to this block, and something like that. It's, it's very straightforward logic. We, we, we think at the end it will be just like two screens of code, which is actually the main business logic, and all the logic of the plugins is inside there. For example, uh, a good example is their Spice. Um, we have two kinds of Spice plugins. We have one kind of Spice plugin, which is actually only triggered when there's nothing else triggered before. And we have one kind of spice, which is a kill result spice. So when this spice is triggering, the others triggering what was before is killed. This spice is proceeding then. So this is an example how we, how we make this. But there are so many cases. So I thought about how to normalize this, but there is no freaking way to do this because there are so many cases and options. Yes. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so at first, uh, um, something I need to say about Gabriel. Um, Gabriel uh, was the founder of NamesDatabase.com, which was sold for a huge amount of money, which made him some kind of investor. He he started to to uh, invest in other companies. He has investment in many many startups. He has no investment in DuckDuckGo. Um, but he is caring about DuckDuckGo, he loves DuckDuckGo, and he's, he's, he did four years as its only thing. Yeah, besides his, his uh, investor things, he always cared about DuckDuckGo. But what he also made there, he is very business aware and very cost aware. So we are really working cheap. We are really trying to spare money at any point. He's really, at some point, he's sparing money, like for example, every other guy would register tons of billions to main to be sure that every fucking typo is... is, is, is I said it. <laughs> Every typo is actually a catch, yeah? We don't register that. We have like 10, 15 domains which are actually pointing to us. Well, we uh, have duck.com, Yeah? Duck, duck, for example, duck.com is registered by Google. They bought the domain. Some weeks after DuckDuckGo was started. <laughs> so, um, so it's, it's, it's like we are very effective in this level. So DuckDuckGo had in the past four years like, I don't know, five, uh, $200 or $100 costs per month. Yeah. So just Amazon stuff. And, and we can also scale easily. We have not like uh, every DuckDuckGo node by itself can be its own node because we have no central uh, data set we all need to write to because we are just reading. So, so we, sp we can spread nodes how we want. It's very, very easy. And he's not like started with, hey, I need to hire everybody and everything, because we do inbound hiring. So it's very, very slow. We have now, we, we are going now to the fifth year nearly, and we have four, uh, five full-time employees. And the income is coming actually from, uh, uh, let's search something which will definitely bring up some advertisement. No. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's try it with booking. <coughs> okay, normally, normally there should be behind between here a sponsored link, yeah, which is like the same as sponsored link at, at uh, Google. But the point is, we only get money for the click because as we don't track you, when someone views the, the sponsored link, it's actually not bringing in something. Yeah, th 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 it, de it depends on the terminal situation. Sometimes it's like when, our, when, when the uh, uh, ads RP is not giving us good, good things, we don't show them. Yeah? So it's like we prefer to not show an ad than to show an ad. Yeah? Um, you can also deactivate this. You can also say, hey, I go into the settings and just fuck it. I don't want to do ads. I don't want to see ads. And you can still use DuckDuckGo. We, we don't do this. The other thing which is actually making much more money is... When you have search results there, for example, to Amazon, we add an affiliate link. We have, I think, three or four companies right now where we have 
users where we use the affiliate programs and just add our affiliate to the link to Amazon. And this is actually really, really driving lots of money. We are not depending on Amazon. As said, we have investors, we have other options, we have so growing fan base, so many companies who come to us and thanks, we have a contract with Debian. Debian is encouraging their uh, software packager, package maintainer to use DuckDuckGo as their default search engine. We are giving back Debian income for that and everything. Even though I must say it's like one fifth of the money you get at Google, you can get at us, but it's uh, uh, the non-tracking problem. Yeah? But that is why we have to m work much harder and need much more motivation from the community. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope this answered the question. Yeah. So, any other questions? Yeah. Um, yes, we, uh, even though we don't track you, in the moment where you access the IP is there. There's GeoIP database, so we can access the location where you are and then use the location name to search, some, so search at Yelp or somewhere else for locations in the near. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, I sadly have not a prepared pre example of what, what it says, but there are s many options, but I don't know. Let's test it. Hmm, not really working, uh, but this is the direction, yeah? So we want to give the plugin developers the option to get the location of the user so that they can work with this and, 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 and give options there. Um, as said, we have plugins which are already using this, but I don't know out of, out of head now. Um, yeah, and this is, uh, I think this answered the question. I don't know. That's the point. The guy who is actually doing this, this uh, uh, stuff or is starting this stuff or the people who are doing this stuff or the people who are talking about this should define this. We want to make it distributed. We thought about thinking like the, the, the Seek concept, Seek FR concept, which is a distributed search engine there. Um, but of course, we must concentrate to our target. So we must see how we do this. But as said, Gabriel wants to not invest 10 millions. So if there's someone up coming up with a good idea, we will go that direction. But we must wait till it's done to make this achieved. Any more question? No? Right. Okay, so I hope, what's the time? It's 10.50, man. <laughs> good job, Getty. Woo!